All right, guys, so we're back and we're going to do another tutorial for OBS. Um, if you watch the first one, you know the basic setup, how to make sure your OBS is streaming through YouTube, uh, how to access your stream key and the basic fundamentals of setting the whole thing up, as well as the basic fundamentals of how OBS works, which is a matter of scenes and sources. Now, we're going to get a little bit more in depth into this, and this is more talking about the concepts and the interesting things that you can do for building your scenes and how they need to be built effectively. So when I'm doing the YouTube Saints, we're going to use the YouTube Saints as, as basically the, the standard by how I do a lot of the things that I do. So let's go ahead and take a look at two of the basic scenes that I always set up for the Saints. We have the Saints main, and that'll usually have my camera, and then it will have Nick over in the Skype window. But when we want to watch something, I have a second scene set up that's right here. And I showed you this in the last one. And what this has is a PNG with a cutout for where I will put our video coming through that we're watching. And then I'll have my camera and his capture from Skype right there. So that way we can switch back and forth with a simple click from scene to scene. And then underneath it, I also have one for guests and then guests plus watching the vids. So. We're going to come down here to our test scene and I'm going to explain how basically I get this whole thing set up. First and foremost, let's grab a background. We'll grab, say, one of the, we'll grab one of the Saints ones. Let's see. Saints main image. Good enough. And we'll make sure that's on the bottom. Everything else is going to be up on the top. <laughs> and people start messaging me on Skype. Let me turn that off. There we go. So. First and foremost, like you're gonna have your camera. So I have a fake little 1280 by 1280 by 720p uh, yellow square here to to basically signify like this is where my camera would be. You'd see my camera now, but I'm currently using it, so it's not gonna work too well. So I can go up here and this say this is me, you know, all that kind of shit. I can drag it and I can what the fuck drag it and resize it and move it where I need it to be. Now, let's say for instance, that this is one of the times where I need to have Nick and a guest on, and they're both in my Skype. Well, how exactly am I gonna be doing that? Well, for the purposes of this, I made up a fake Skype window. So let's pretend, let's pretend that Nick is say the red square and our guest is the yellow square. Well, I need to figure out how exactly it is that I'm going to be able to get that and arrange it how I need to. And for that, we're gonna do cropping. And cropping in this is actually really easy. You hold down Alt, and then you grab the sides, and you can squeeze them in. And so I'm going to crop out everything except for Nick's camera. And then it's gonna operate just like any other, and I can resize it. And I can bring it up and try and make it as close to mine as possible. There is, unfortunately, I haven't found a good snap feature on this that helps me align windows. So I kind of have to eyeball it. And every now and then it doesn't seem to show up right. But is is that it? Is that like the, the sum and total of it? Well, no, because where's our guest? How are we going to do that? And for that, we're going to need a second source. Okay, so I basically went and I got another capture of this image. Now, keep in mind, when you're doing this, if you're capturing Skype, you're going to be going to window capture, not image. But it's pretty much the same damn thing. So we already have my camera, Nick's camera. And let's say this second yellow one is going to be the guest. Then I just do the same thing that I did with Nick. And I would crop it like so, and then reposition it as it needs to be. Really, really basic stuff. Resizing, cropping, make sure everything fits how you want it to fit. Now, a word of warning though, when you're using something like Skype is when people drop out or when they add in, all of the images resize. So when we do the YouTube Saints, we usually have to call the guests before the show starts, and then I set up the scenes to make sure they're going to fit exactly how they need, and then uh, hang up on them and then call them back like during the show. But even if it's somebody like say, we did it with Kraut and T and Kraut and T didn't have his camera on, well, you still have to arrange it because their icon will still pop up and it will still squish Nick's camera out of the way. So 
it's a really good idea to make sure before you go live, if you're going to be using something like Skype, to make sure it is arranged how it needs to be. Now, before we get into filters, there's one other thing that I kind of wanted to make a little bit of a mention about, and that is sources. You do have a mixer here, but you can also add audio sources. Now, I'm not going to get into how to do it, but there are things like virtual audio cable and a bunch of other different programs that will give you separate audio channels that you can then use for whatever it is that you want to do. So for instance, when I do the Saints in the uh, holding screen, let's get it to right here. And that's from the, uh, the last time that we were live two weeks ago. And we had Magog on. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you can see right here, I have an extra audio one called Extra One. And that basically goes to an extra audio channel. And when I was playing the intro music, I used a program like Audacity, and I made it go to that audio channel. That way, I could mute everything else that was going on on my computer. My mic, uh, Nick's mic, because it's coming through as desktop audio. And that way, we can still talk, but the music is playing in the background for you guys while we're getting set up and we're talking about the last little things we need to do before we go live. So it is something to keep in mind if you are big on wanting to to do extra audio effects or needing to to solve that problem of needing your guest and and you muted at the same time but still have sound, you can look into something like virtual audio cable. It is kind of complicated to set up, but it is worth it if you have the patience. All right, so the last thing that I want to show you guys before we call it quits for this video is filters. And filters are really interesting. Now, all of these different things that you could do in here with sources, audio input capture, audio output capture, browser source, etc., 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 etc. There's all sorts of different interesting things that you can do with them. But there's things that you can do on top of those things. And I'd like to show you a couple of different ones. Uh, for the first one that we'll do is, so there's a, an option to just add text. Random shit. And so you can see it's up at the top there, and we can type in whatever comes to our mind. Blah, blah, blah. Basic crap right up there. And you can grab it, resize it, whatever you want. No big deal. Select the font, select the color. You can make it go vertical, whatever. But... In everything that we have here, there is something called filters. Now, filters are really interesting and really powerful. You can do a lot of shit with it. I like to do a ticker during the hold screen for the, the YouTube Saints. And one of those things that you can do is called scroll. So we'll go ahead and hit scroll, horizontal speed. And that's basically the idea of how you use it. And that's that's pretty basic, pretty basic stuff. But you can get a little crazy with some of these things too. And I mean really, really, really nuts. There is all sorts of crazy stuff. Render, delay, you can sharpen your images, crop things that way if you wanted to. But the way I showed you with cropping is way easier. But then we have something called chroma key. And this is where you can do some really wild shit. So right here we have our fake Skype window. And let's say, let's say you have something like a Google Hangouts. You still want to use Google Hangouts because it's easier for people to talk to you, but you want to have the control of your live stream and you want to be able to do something really interesting with it. Well, obviously, you can use cropping methods to get, say, like the, the participants down on the bottom. You could crop it again to have their main camera or whatever. But something I've seen other people do, and uh, the open house does this, is they use chroma key. So chroma key, we'll go up here to filters. Let's add chroma key. And so right here it says key color type, green, similarity, smoothness, blah, 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 blah. What you could do, go to a custom color, select color, and you can pick any color you want or pick screen color. Now with that done, let's, uh, let's tone down the similarity, but with that in place, that has now removed that entire gray background from where it was. And what the open house does, which is really interesting, is he'll have only people's icons show up, not their cameras. And so usually in Hangouts, you know, you'll have the circle and then they, they talk and it ripples out. 
he uses chroma key to basically strip all of that color out from behind it so it all shows up on his background image and it looks great it looks absolutely phenomenal and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff it's just really trying to find what kind of trick that you want to accomplish with whatever you want to do with your stream so i hope that helps i hope some of these tips will help you guys do your own creations uh change things up make them really really wild uh, I like to experiment with it. Sometimes it, it just, it, the process of building it is even more fun sometimes in the streams. Like for instance, I have my Thirsty Thursday uh, one right here. And <laughs> this is really fun. And it gives me a good idea to, uh, to tell you one last tip before we go. Let's get rid of the Firefox. This is all basic static images and stuff. There's layered, there's a layered TV, a layered my body. Right here is where I have a chat. Usually my webcam will appear in there. And then I have all sorts of stuff. I can stick my Chrome up here, my Firefox. Uh, I can have a separate window for my super chats, like whatever I want. And it just, it looks funny and interesting. And it's something more than just like a really basic, dull, boring live stream. Now, the last thing I want to show you is really, really cool. So with this right here, when I get my chats, there's a really, really cool trick you can do. And this is basically a browser source. And you use browser source and it'll basically pull from a URL. You can set your width, your height, all that kind of shit. And what I'll do is I'll go to the stream that I'm going to be broadcasting from. Before I go live, I while I'm in my control panel, you can click on click on watch page and it'll go to the page that everybody else is going to be viewing. Then when you're there, go over to the chat, click the little triple buttons to get it to pop out, and when it pops out into a separate window, copy that address, put it in a browser source, and then you'll get your chat scrolling without you having to have it even open on your computer dumping into your stream. So it's just another little uh, interesting and fun little tip for you guys. Anyway, that's going to be about it for now. If I come across any more interesting, new, uh, cool ways to just be be a ninja with, with OBS, then I'll share them with you in another video. Uh, if you find some cool tips, by all means, share them with me, send them to me on Twitter, comment on this video down below. I'd love to see them. I can't wait to see what other people do to just try and spruce up their streams and maybe like use this and take their, their production quality and, and efforts to the next level. So with that out of the way, I hope everybody has a fantastic day. I'll see you next time.